Minister of Health, Wellness, and the Environment, Ms. Annie Wilson, Country Program Specialist with the Pan American Health Organization, Mrs. Claudette Lilda Williams, a retired public servant with the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and the Environment, Ms. Kamala Kittels, Medical Technologist, Mr. Gregory Ferrari, one of our special blood donors, Chief Medical Officer, Mrs. Simone Kiesa Beach, we still say Honorable, Clayton Bergen, Past Minister of Health, Wellness, and the Environment, Heads of Programs, and other members of staff of the Ministry of Health, Wellness, and the Environment. And we also have with us Mr. Martin Kwashi, representative from the St. Vincent Cooperative Bank. Other invited guests, the media, ladies and gentlemen, a very special good morning to you. On the 14th of June each year, the World Health Organization designates this day as World Blood Donor Day. St. Vincent and the Grenadines is a member state of the World Health Organization, and we can do no less than to join in the celebration. The purpose of today's event is to raise awareness of the need for safe blood and blood products. This year's campaign focuses on blood donation in emergencies. The slogan for this year is, what can you do? With a secondary message, give blood, give now, give often. With the primary message being, what can you do? We are here to share with you what we in the Ministry of Health has done. At this point, we are here this morning to commission our new mobile blood units, which will be stationed at the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital. So at this point, I'll invite Ms. Kamala Kittel's medical medical technologist at the Pathology Lab to bring brief remarks. Protocol having already been established, a pleasant morning to all. And welcome to our mobile launch. I want to say a special happy Donor Day to all our donors present here and maybe walking nearby or will be hearing soon. As Ms. Wiley said, this year our focus, the focus for World Blood Donor Day is on our preparedness during disaster. With the slogans, don't wait until disaster strikes. What can I do? Give blood, give now, give often. The one of the main roles of the, our mobile blood bank would be to increase our pool of voluntary blood donors. Currently at the blood bank, our, most of our blood donations come from replacement donors, which are family or friends. Our mandate is to strive for 100% voluntary blood don donations, which have, which have been proven to be the most effective, the safest blood supply you can get. Imagine if you're a family member coming to donate for a family. They'll be under some sort of distress. We have to give them a brief interview. We do some preliminary checks to make sure that they qualify to give blood. I being under distress, I might not answer any questions you may ask. Or I might tend to lie. This blood has to be tested. And a lot of the times, the blood that is tested and tainted tend to be those from replacement donors. So with the mobile, we are hoping to increase our pool of voluntary blood donors and increase our pool of safe blood. Um, it so happens that World Blood Donor Day falls during our, our hurricane season, which is over the last couple of years, we have been more prone to landslides and other disasters. Um, I remember two years no, when we had the December 14th, the December 24th Christmas Eve floods. We had a piece on the radio for blood donors to come in. We had about five persons responding. And then we had that big flood 
on December 24th. Imagine if, if, if it were worse. We only had a few deaths, but imagine if it were worse and the body responded to the call to come and donate. We are hoping that we don't have to be making these appeals anymore. With the mobile, we'll be able to approach the public. We'll go to the, we, our plans are to make stops at the windward side, the leeward side, tongue, and the grenadines as far as Beckway. With the mobile, we are hoping that persons will just see the need to find within themselves to come and donate some blood. Knowing that uh, the life you save can be your own. One unit of blood can actually save three persons. So just, just the thought of knowing that you're helping to save a life, you do not have to know the life. That alone should drive all of us to become voluntary blood work. It does not take a lot. On a yearly basis, we collect about 1,100, 1,200 um, units of blood. On a yearly basis, we have about 7,000 plus requests for blood and blood components. If we want to honor all of those requests, you see what trouble we'll be in. So that's why we need to make sure our stock is constant, our stock is constantly replenished. A unit of blood can only last for 35 days. So that means we need to have constant donations so that our stock is always up where it should be. Cancers are on the rise, accidents are on the rise, postpartum hemorrhage. You have well, a lot of violent activities now that require blood transfusion. So these are some of the reasons why we need to make sure that we have a pool of voluntary blood donors who come and donate blood on a regular basis. Every eight weeks, every three months, you can donate. Um, our mobile, well, we have had it for a little while, but we are so grateful for the help that we have gotten from the government and from the government of Japan as well. So we are finally ready to hit the road. Today after our launch, we, would, we were hoping to do a donation, but we won't be able to. But after our launch, we'll be embarking on a lot of educational activities. Because before you can donate blood, you need to be sensitized. So for the next couple of weeks, you'll be hearing um, stuff on the radio. We'll be hopefully, hopefully having some drives. As well as from here on, we'll be encouraging corporate the corporate areas to come and you can organize your own blood drives. You don't have to wait on us. You can organize your own blood drives and we'll just prepare the staff and we'll go out and be able to collect the, the blood units. Um, so I'm making a special appeal to all of us here who cannot donate for any medical reason. You, you still have a responsibility to help to recruit, recruit donors. And just remember our slogan for this year, what can I do? And you already have the answer, give blood. Give now, give often. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Kittels. And let me at this point apologize for the absence of Mr. Elliot Samuel, who is presently in charge of the lab. He is overseas on official duties. So we have Ms. Kittels sitting in for him. The Pan American Health Organization is an important partner in the delivery of health care in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. They have demonstrated their support to this event and making it possible this morning for us to commission this blood bag. So at the present, I invite Ms. Annie Wilson, Country Program Specialist with the Pan American Health Organization, to bring brief remark on behalf of our organization. Ms. Wilson. The Honorable Minister of Health, Mr. Ro Honorable Robert Brown, I almost said Luke, because I am accustomed to say Luke Brown. You should have said Luke. <laughs> <laughs> Minister of Health, Mr. Clayton Bergen, our Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Kiza Beach, PS in the Ministry of Health, Wellness and Environment, Mr. Cuthbert Knight, we have our Chief Nutritionist, Andrea Robin, oh, uh, we have uh, Mr. Gregory Ferrari, who is a blood donor, the hospital administrator, Sister Walters, we have with her Sister Jilks, we have uh, 
Sister Scott from Family Planning. The, we have Sister Samuel, our Chief Senior Nursing Officer, Blood Donors, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Today, the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment hosts the official commemoration of the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital Mobile Blood Bank. My organization, PAHO WHO, through its biennial program budget, continues to provide much needed assistance to countries through continued training and other technical in-country support. This activity is one of the many programs we continue to support. We therefore applaud your efforts towards the provision of safe blood for all. I am quite sure it took a lot of coordination, collaboration, and hard work to get to this point of launching this mobile blood bank to serve the population of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. This valued piece of equipment commemorated today can be considered a hallmark because today, June the 14th, is celebrated around the world as World Blood Donor Day. World Blood Donor Day is now celebrated each year throughout the world on the 14th of June to raise awareness of the importance of blood donations and to recognize the contribution of voluntary unpaid blood donors in saving lives and improving health. World Blood Donor Day has a further purpose. It's to create a wider awareness throughout the world about the need for availability and appropriate use of safe blood and blood products and the need for many more people to make a commitment to regular voluntary unpaid blood donations. Let me take a short moment to thank all blood donors for the numerous unpaid blood donations and ask of them to encourage their family members to donate blood as well. All blood types are welcome, especially O negative blood donations, which is a rare blood type sometimes required in emergencies. It is important to note that the first World Blood Donor Day was observed in 2004, which was followed by its designation as an annual global event by the 58th World Health Assembly in 2005. The date, the 14th of June, is really the birthday of Karl Landsteiner, an Austrian biologist and physician considered to be the founder of modern blood transfusion. Landsteiner discovered the ABO blood group in 1901 and developed modern systems of classification of blood groups and identified in 1937, together with Alexander Wiener, the rhesus factor thus enabling physicians to transfuse blood without endangering a patient's life. The question is, why are we focusing on blood? Well, blood is, important, is an important resource, both for planned treatments and urgent interventions. It can help patients suffering from life-threatening conditions live longer and with a higher quality of life. It also supports complex medical and surgical procedures. Blood is also vital for treating the wounded during emergencies of all kinds, such as natural disasters, road traffic accidents, just to name a few incidents, you know, every now and again encounters disasters. It also has an essential life-saving role in maternal and perinatal care, which speaks to our pregnant women and their babies. It is of critical importance to know that a blood service which gives patients access to safe blood and blood products in sufficient quantity is a key component of an effective health system. PAHO WHO continues to provide guidance to countries so that they can ensure a safe and sufficient blood supply. Now this requires the development of a nationally coordinated blood transfusion service based on voluntary 
non-renumerated, which means not unpaid, blood donations. So having a mobile unit will certainly enhance the capabilities of the unit to move to communities, to sensitize communities concerning the need to donate blood, as well as becoming a blood donor. Please be reminded that the success of this mobile blood bank is dependent on all of us to donate blood, which will help in turn to maintain the hospital blood bank reserves. This year, World Blood Donor Day campaign will focus on blood donations in emergencies. Now, when a crisis occurs or an emergency situation, the, nat the natural human response is, what can I do? How can I help? Therefore, the slogan for 2017 campaign is, what can you do? With the secondary message, as was said before, give blood, give now, give often. The campaign underlines the role of every single person or the role of every single person in this issue. It is saying that we need to give the gift of blood. It also focuses on the fact that it is important to give blood regularly so that the blood stock is sufficient before an emergency or a crisis arises. I close by wishing the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment all the best in their mobile blood bank pledge. And I pledge PAHO WHO's continued support to all the health initiatives as per its mandate in country. I thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wilson, and also to the Pan American Health Organization for your continued technical and financial support. And Ms. Wilson emphasized this year's focus, unpaid voluntary donation of blood. And I would say to my colleagues that if ever I have to do uh, any blood work, I feel as though they're draining every bit of blood out of my body. You can take the blood, but don't let me see. And at this point, we have with us a very special guest in the person of Mr. Gregory Ferrari, who I understand, and I would term it as a long-standing member of the pathology lab. He has been donating blood since before many of you seated in the audience were born, and that is close to 50 years. And let us commend him. And we also have two in our audience, Mr. Clayton Bergen, who was our past Minister of Health, Wellness, and the Environment. And he too, over the years, has donated blood voluntarily, so let us congratulate him as well. So at this point, I invite Mr. Ferrari to the podium to give brief remarks. Good morning all. Happy Blood Donors Day. I would first like to thank Ms. Patels for giving me this little opportunity to say a few words on this historic occasion and historic it is, which is extremely long overdue. I won't tell you how long. I won't tell you how long. But as the saying goes, good things come to those to people who wait. And we have waited. And we are here. Ladies and gentlemen, forgive me for saying we. But I consider myself as um, one of the, uh, a family of the blood bank unit. So forgive me when I say we. What I will say to potential blood donors, we have you now. No more excuses. Like, I ain't going, going town to give blood. It's too far. None of that. Well, we are coming to meet you. And you will know when and where. I want to make, um, uh, to, but we want voluntary blood donors. Don't wait for us to come to you. Volunteer, come to us. 
us weak. You know what I mean? Donating blood is very easy and a painless exercise. It takes 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah, and I, I, and I, I would know. And at the end of it, you're off with a mall. No wrong. I would like to send out an appeal to one and all to please make this project a success so that Ms. Cattells and her hardworking and conscientious staff could be happy and proud. So please, let's make this a success. It only takes us to make it a success, not only her. Fathers, Sunday is Father's Day. I'm asking all fathers to give a gift, to give a gift of a pint of blood. Not necessary on Sunday, because you'll say, oh, Sunday, I didn't have time. Any other day after that, it will still be a gift. So, and wives and girlfriends, take your, take your husbands or the boyfriend and donate yourself. I don't mean donate yourself, I mean donate blood <laughs> And, um, and that, when you donate, you'll be asked to go to the hospital. You may get the Memorial Hospital because she won't be ready for you as yet. Um, yeah, finally, I would like to applaud Ms. Cattells and her staff for doing a fantastic job making this a success and a reality. Well done. Thank you very much, Mr. Ferrari. And the vehicle according to Mr. Ferrari is, is a she. I don't know what he used to determine that. <laughs> but we want to thank you for what you have done for us over the years. And I understand that there are other persons in the audience who have been voluntary donors over the years. And if you care to, could you kindly stand so we can recognize and acknowledge you. Thank you very much. We have seated at the head table Mrs. Claudette Lynn Williams. A couple, I'll say a couple months ago, she had to leave her second home. She retired. And I think the lab was Claudette's second home, um, place of abode. And we couldn't do this this morning without inviting her. She was very instrumental in getting this on stream. And Miss, Mrs. Williams, we are pleased to have you this morning. And you have most of the background information on this. And we now invite you to the podium to give you to that. Certainly feels like I have never left. <laughs> uh, Honorable Minister uh, Robert Brown. <laughs> Could probably be my son when I was like, and he tempted to say, just say Luke. <laughs> uh, Papo Country Coordinator, Ms. Annie Wilson. Ms. Cattells didn't say that. Um, she is the head of the blood bank unit at the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital. I know there is no such thing in the, in the, in the regular uh, structure, but of necessity uh, for the day-to-day -day running, there are certain persons who are appointed, well, delegated to certain responsibilities. And um, Ms. Cato's is no mean department head. Uh, our esteemed Gregory Ferrari, uh, our most well-known donor, and as he has uh, pointed out to you, uh, uh, I'm happy that he is still around and that he is um, basically asking some of you guys to pick up the slack. And our <laughs> and our uh, chairperson, Ms. Patsy Riley, a 
and all of you, or most of you here, my former colleagues, uh, former minister who is probably not too far behind Gregory. <laughs> well, in terms of years of donation, donation um, but needs to be recognized, and I see some other familiar faces, those who stood a while ago. Uh, when Gregory presented, he didn't want to tell you how long this operation was in train, but those who know me know I always say I'm not a lover of white elephants. I, when I was at the lab, if I got an instrument or whatever, any kind of material, materials are expensive and um, we expect to use them. I'll just say that in March 2008, what for me became of that white elephant uh, was officially, the keys were officially handed over um, from PANCAP who procured that uh, unit for us. Now, many years ago, they saw the need, as Mr. Tell said, for uh, increasing our voluntary blood donor pool. And we were extremely excited. But the excitement as a years, and we were not able to fulfill what we had promised, uh, became a chokehold. And it was hard for me to watch the expensive white elephant standing in the hospital there, yeah. but like Gregory, I'm happy that we are here today, and I only want to caution that uh, that's well, she, if I have to say like Gregory, <laughs> I, might, I might say he, but okay, she is now not purely white anymore, we have our lovely um, red color of blood uh, affixed to it, and it means that we are closer to realizing um, the functions of, of that uh, unit. However, as I said, I wanted to caution that uh, the materials and particularly the staff that's needed to really make that fully operational on a consistent basis need to be, to, to be carefully looked at. We are there. It can actually go somewhere now. The intention was, and as it's, it's standing right here, beautifully adorned in the middle of Kingstown, uh, this might well be one of the very areas where we can come to the town center. And um, because the, the intention was to go to where uh, the masses of crowds uh, reside. So on an 8 to 4 basis, Kingston, the Ministry of Health is right there. That's the link with our multiple uh, ministries. So we have lots of people residing right across there. Then there's a financial complex across um, by the other parking lots where lots of people reside. There's the NIS building with a parking lot and whatever. So we are coming to you. And I still say we. Uh, it's, it's hard to not say we, <laughs> but um, we are coming and we expect you to simply uh, step out of your, might be a comfort zone or whatever, and um, help us to, to save lives. Ms. Patel has mentioned the voluntary blood donor issue. And um, I just want to say that, to echo what she has said in terms of not waiting until the need arises and then the family members or whomever have, are the ones who turn up to give the blood. We are, we were, when, when we got that, we were expecting to increase our voluntary burden to, to 100%. We are less than 
We were 11 last year, but um, if we average the last five years, we would still be um, less than less than 10 percent. So we have a lot of work to do. And I'm saying the we know means all of us, and including you, John Public. We, it is much easier to have a pool of blood that's available and um, when you turn up whether to the hospital or wherever you might, a transfusion might be needed that the hassle is not either on the blood bank or the relatives and friends to at that point in time it might just be too late and in, in some instances I wouldn't say that persons have died because of um, lack of blood but uh, the delayed um, receipt of a transfusion can cause uh, maybe a longer time for healing and, and the likes. Right, so I, I just want to close too by really, really, really making an, an appeal to, it's been long and we waited. Gregory says, um, good thing comes to those who wait. I'm always very an anxious because I like to grab. So I say good, those who grab get the best. Okay, so we are at this point now, so let's grab the opportunity and um, be self-sufficient in our uh, blood donation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mrs. Williams, for being here with us this morning and providing some background information. With us this morning, we have Honorable Robert Brown, our Minister of Health, Wellness and the Environment. He would deliver the feature address, and as I indicated earlier that Mr. Clayton Bergen, our past Minister of Health, is a blood donor, and maybe Mr. Bergen would pass the baton on to our minister to become one of our voluntary blood donors. Yeah. So maybe we can have that commitment this morning. <laughs> and also to let remind the minister that Mr. Ferrari has been donating blood long before he was born. How do I know that? Very often he would tell us his age, so that's how I know that Mr. Ferrari has been donating blood long before he was born. So let us invite our Minister of Health to the podium to address us. Thank you, Chair. All of a sudden I feel a lot of peer pressure. <laughs> And, and it would seem as if I have to, to join the ranks of my colleague, Minister Clayton Bogan, and uh, become a voluntary blood donor. And that is a, that is a noble calling. Uh, when I was being introduced, and uh, Mrs. Wiley, you know, as, as she insists this morning, referred to me as the Honorable Robert Brown. Someone who was sitting beside me, I wouldn't say exactly who, said that just sounds so wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the truth is, my more familiar name is of course Luke, as many of you all know. And don't think that there's no basis for calling me Luke. It's actually my third name in my formulations, in, in the formulation of names. My parents were kind enough to saddle me with four names. <laughs> and I have to carry that burden for the rest of my life. <laughs> and uh, Robert happens to be my official name. I'd just like to acknowledge in our midst, and they have in fact been acknowledged to some extent already, two very important persons in this whole exercise. One, one is my tested, tested, Testing. 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 Okay. I don't think we're not going to allow anything to prevent us from getting out the message of blood donations this morning. So that was a quick intervention there by the technician. So two, two persons in our midst. 
and, and I am advised that the PS was the one who went there and made the difference. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if it was just the force of his presence or what, but <laughs> it, it, it could have been a prayer. But I, I was making the point that the you Lord know, are two very important persons who are central to our undertakings this morning. The former Minister of Health, Clayton Bergen, and of course we heard already from Claude Ledlow Williams. And the truth is that despite the fact that these individuals who had different roles within the ministry went into what you might term retirement, they have really never left the ministry. And they are closely connected to this exercise. You already heard that Minister Bogan is a man that has been given blood almost since time immemorial. And uh, on that note, I'd just like to acknowledge Gregory Ferrari, Ferrari for what he has done. I mean, the chair, Mrs. White, they already let the cat out of the bag and said that he has been giving blood since before I was born. And uh, I'm still a relatively young man. But I understand that, how many, how many years has it been now for the Ferrari? From 1969. From 1969. So in other words, he's been giving blood before plenty other people born. <laughs> He's almost been given blood before my parents were born. <laughs> so, so that kind of commitment to the cause is really worthy of emulation. And uh, I pay tribute to these individuals who, who were a part of this effort for a long time. And I also want to thank those among us who actually took up the mantle and carried it on. For instance, we heard from Miss Cattells this morning and from her eloquence and uh, her articulate manner of presentation, we could see that not only is she performing good service as the head of the blood donation unit, but she's able to give a good account of herself at the platform. And uh, naturally, we also heard from the chair who is a veteran in this thing. Uh, but I mentioned Mrs. Williams already and Annick Wilson from Pahu and I want to thank Pahu again for being, for being a partner with us in this important exercise. I should say that I am also very happy to stand here in my capacity of Chairman of the Executive Board of the Pan-Caribbean Partnership Against HIV AIDS because even though it is something which preceded me coming to office and uh, which had its genesis in around 2008, as I understand it. PANCAP was responsible for providing us with this mobile blood bank that we see here before us. So give a round of applause for, for PANCAP. And I would accept that applause on PANCAP's behalf. So I'd also like to acknowledge in, the, in our midst this morning presence and I see, I see some ongoing work with the, the system. I hope that we could get it right and sort it out so we don't have to endure these sort of interruptions. It may be that the PS needs to return backstage. <laughs> well, in, in this case, it seems as if just calling his name is enough. <laughs> but I'd like to acknowledge the presence of of other of my ministerial colleagues here this morning, including the permanent secretary, secretary, the chief medical officer, we have the chief nursing officer, we have the hospital administrator, we have a number of other individuals here, so much so that I almost think that I'm in the middle of a staff meeting this morning. <laughs> it's just that this is a special kind of staff meeting with the media and with other members of our extended family. We are happy to have you all here. Uh, well, it would be remiss of me if I didn't mention that also here is Mrs. Andrea Robin. And I say, I refer to her because we are just coming out of the Nutrition Awareness Week and they were responsible for putting together a real exciting package of activities which culminated last Saturday with a great event at Anna's Vale. So she would want me to tell you that it's not only for us to give blood, but we must also be physically active. And uh, 
I eat Kalaloo, she says. <laughs> but the Nutrition Awareness Week last week was held under the team of be sugar, being sugar smart. In other words, monitoring the amount of sugar that you take into your diet. Now, in uh, most of the foregoing speeches, you have heard already that today is a very special day on the calendar. In that June 14th has been designated or was designated by the World Health Organization as World Blood Donors Day. And uh, when Mrs. Robin was saying her prayer, she probably inadvertently, perhaps intentionally, made a reference to the lifeblood. You know, and it's most apt because when you hear somebody talk about the lifeblood, you know that they are talking about something that is essential, something that is important. And this is the kind of symbolism that blood has in our society. And we get a clear idea. But first of all, I mean, when we go back to the annals of medical history, there was a time when scientists did not know precisely what function the blood performed precisely how it worked and it operated. And they began to learn and to discover more and more about the blood. And the more that they found out, the more they understood how central it is to our life. And then we know blood from our own personal experiences. One of the most traumatic things that could happen to a person, to a child, and certainly one of the most traumatic things that could have happened to me when I was growing up, was for me to get a cut and see blood start to run. And we know that if it is a case where there is a mark right here on my forehead. But when I was, was a young boy, I had a lot of adventure. And uh, on one occasion, I was running down a hillside, just outside my school, and I fell down head first, with my head right here, and I didn't have a problem after falling down. I just got up and started playing again as usual. But when I realized that it started to bleed, I almost started to cry uncontrollably. So we understand the importance of blood. And there are sometimes, this is a minor, a relatively minor occurrence, but there could be major in injuries. We could have someone who was damaged as a result of being involved in a road accident. We could have someone who is damaged, perhaps, on a job site. We could have someone who is damaged as a result of the, of the cause of a natural disaster. There's so many situations that could cause damage to be inflicted. And uh, when this damage is inflicted, there's a loss of blood. And as a result of this loss of blood, and of course, there are other situations too. It could be during a surgery. It could be in child's word. And I'm sure that everyone here could identify with some situation or the other where there was a loss of blood and there was a need for blood to keep life going. That's all that's necessary for us to really appreciate how important it is to donate blood. It is so important that we wanted to take away the inconvenience of you having to travel from disparate places in this country to the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital to the lab and they're doing a really very good work at the lab at the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital. And it's not just in relation to collecting blood but it's in relation to all other aspects of their portfolio. And uh, we, we found it so important for there to be a ready and consistent and reliable supply of blood that we said it's not enough for us to ask people to have to take the trek, long or short, as the case might be, to the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital to be able to give blood. We are now going to come to you to make it easier and to give us a better chance of being able to respond optimally to emergency situations as the case might require. Now, what we're doing here is something that rests upon a solid foundation. And the foundation was laid down when we already heard that the World Health Organization designated the 14th of June 
as World Blood Donors Day. You should also pay attention to the fact that what we're doing here today is founded upon a resolution of the World Health Assembly. We definitely, definitely need to get more reliable pay systems for these kinds of occasions. What we have, what we're doing today, is founded on a resolution of the World Health Assembly. It so happens that I just returned from the World Health Assembly edition this year in Geneva, and there were some important things that happened at that assembly this year. For instance, there was the election of a new director general, a guy, Dr. Tedros, from Ethiopia, the first African person to become director general of the World Health Assembly. And not only is he the first African, but and somebody, therefore, he is also somebody who is connected to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, who understands our interests and our needs, and is prepared to speak to those interests and those needs. And the, the opportunity to elaborate on that, I'm sure, will come up later. But I'm saying here that the World Health Assembly Resolution 6312 calls upon member states to develop national blood systems which are self-sufficient and which are able to cater for our particular needs. That is precisely what we're doing. And this development in that quest is an important one. And as Brother Ferrari said, it is a historic one. Now, the theme, and you've heard the theme already and I wanted to to go with you because we have so many good examples among us. We have Minister Bergen, we have Brother Ferrari, and we have, there's a lady in the, in the audience here, Jennifer King, who stood up, and then another young lady, I'm not too familiar with her name, but who stood up and said that they have been given blood routinely for many years. And what we call upon to, the, to do today on World Blood Donors Day 2017 is reflected in the theme. And the theme for World Blood Donors Day today, what can you do? Give blood. Give now and give often. So the act of giving blood once is not enough. So don't feel as if, well, you, you give blood in 2017, you take that off of your to-do list, and you forget about what the future might require of you again. So what you can do is give blood. Give now, give often. And uh, we've heard an appeal to fathers in uh, light of upcoming Father's Day. But I want to also appeal to mothers so that there is a balance in the equation. And I want to appeal to individuals who have no children. I want to appeal to persons who are young and persons who are old and persons who are in between. In other words, I want to appeal to all Vincentians to take the message of this theme to heart. Give blood, give now, and give often. And uh, this is not an idle week. I made the point that it is founded upon a resolution of the World Health Assembly. And I also make the point that there are very clearly defined objectives set up for this week. And I think it's helpful for me to just actually go to these objectives to give you a sense of what they are. One, to encourage people to strengthen the emergency preparedness of health services in their community by donating blood. Two, to engage authorities in the establishment of effective blood donor programs with the capacity to respond promptly to the need to increase blood during emergencies. Three, to promote the inclusion of blood transfusion services in national emergency preparedness and response activities. Four, to build wider public awareness. And what we're doing right now is connected to this objective of building wider public awareness. To build wider public awareness of the need for committed year-round blood donation in order to maintain adequate supplies 
and achieve national self-sufficiency. Five, to celebrate and thank individuals who donate regularly and encourage young people to become new donors as well. So we're achieving our objectives, it is very clear. And six, to promote international collaboration and to ensure worldwide dissemination of and consensus on the principles of voluntary, non-remunerated donation while increasing blood safety and availability. Well, we have already found out that it is not entirely non-remunerated because you get a vitamin malt. So, so that is a form of remuneration, as, as modest as it might be. So we are here today, thankfully, we have come here by the grace of God and by the efforts of many people who have contributed to this effort. I've already mentioned Panka, who made the donation of the, the, the blood bank. How much did it cost, by the way? Hmm? 90,000 plus cost. Half a million? So it costs about half a million EC dollars. So it is not a trifling contribution. Half a million EC dollars went into the purchase of the vehicle alone. That, all, that doesn't include the nicing up on the side as, as Mrs. Williams mentioned there. That doesn't include the training because in fact, PAHO, training and public awareness, because PAHO donated as well to the component of training and public awareness activities. So it is a sip. A substantial and significant investment was made to increase our capacity. It came, and this is, we're talking here about upfront capital costs. We have half a million dollars there. We have additional input in relation to training for outreach and other activities. And one of the things that has to be done very soon, because we are here and we are poised to kickstart our operations. And we have, coincidentally, and I must make this point so that you could get the entire story with us. We also got assistance on a Japanese project to secure funding to procure all the mobile equipment. So we got the, the truck, I don't know if the truck is the, the right name to call this. The, 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 the automobile. <laughs> for blood, we got it. And then we got support from PAHO for outreach. We got support to a Japanese project. And this is what the support from the Japanese project was to do, was to procure all the mobile equipment needed to outfit the unit. So you see that we have a great partnership unfolding right here. And one of the things that we got to do on PS, we got to make sure we, we work this out speedily is ensure that we get a nurse phlebotomist who would be able to man this station. I think that we already have one on staff who must necessarily be based at the hospital, but we need one to go into the highways and byways with this very important piece of equipment. So what you could see or expect in the upcoming weeks, days and weeks, is heightened awareness activities put on by the lab at the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital. And I expect that as a result of these heightened activities, we are going to see more voluntary donations from the population of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. There is a saying that charity begins at home. And while the appeal was made to me, in the form of peer pressure to follow in the footsteps of my noble predecessors. I also want all members of staff at this ministry to be ambassadors in this matter. They're not coming for that. <laughs> but, but I want you to be ambassadors for every single aspect of health. And the aspect of health which is being highlighted today is the need for us to give blood so that we could save lives. We don't know which life we might save. It could be your own life, I am hearing. But the truth is, let us just give knowing 
that there is a need and that the implications of our gift might be far-reaching. It might be the thing that saves someone from losing their life when they get into an accident. It might be the thing that helps us to recover from a natural disaster with minimal damage as far as life's loss. It might be the very thing that helps a mother under surgery because of a complication with pregnancy or some other situation to be able to make it through and watch their precious child grow up. Let us not end, underestimate the value of what we're doing today. And I just want to end on the note of our theme. What can you do? Give blood. Give now and give up. Thank you very much. Minister, I guess you would have to put a monitoring system in place to see how many persons have committed to your request this morning. We want to thank you very much for your address. The next item on the program was a symbolic blood donation, but due to the weather, we were unable to have some preparatory work done for that procedure. So we will move now to the official cutting of the ribbon. We would ask the minister accompanied by Mrs. Claudette Little Williams. We said, we said it's symbolic. Well, we, what we can do, the PS is suggesting that we still do it. A symbolic so we can have our minister in the vehicle and we have that done. We cut the ribbon and then that is done and we move back in for the vote of that. You ready? Everybody ready? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. Son, a son who came and shed his blood for us so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. <laughs> we want to thank the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines for continuing to support the efforts of the Ministry of Health, Wellness and the Environment and for what they will do, what it will do in helping us to achieve our objective of acquiring a phlebotomist, a nurse phlebotomist, and other resources for our mobile bank. 
We wish to extend thanks to the Pan American Health Organization and Sister Anique Wilson for continued support, funding, and for assisting us with today's launch and for future assistance in the sensitization of our programs. The Minister of Health, I wish to say thank you, sir, for your, map, your remarks and for participating in cutting off the ribbon today. And also thank you for your commitment in becoming a blood donor. To, <laughs> to Mrs. Williams, we, this is Claudette Laidlaw Williams, our retired chief laboratory technologist. We wish to say thank you, ma'am, for setting the pace, for paving the way, and for doing all you have done for us over the years to get us to this point, and today for bringing us our remarks. Thank you. Mr. Gregory Ferrari for being a true Vincentian. I'm sure there are a number, he has touched a number of lives in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I am sure being a blood donor for over 50 years. Thank you, thank you sir for what you've done to our citizens or for our citizens and what you will continue to do. I wish to thank Miss Kittels for bringing us remarks this morning. Miss Kittels is not only, a, she's not just a, the head of the blood bank and hospital. Miss Kittels is very, very passionate about what she does. If you speak to the nurses and doctors at the institution, they will tell you that Miss Kittels knows every patient who has ever received a blood donation from us by name. She doesn't necessarily know them by seeing them, but you mention a name and she knows that person. For, um, to our chairperson, Miss Wiley, thank you for a splendid job this morning. This is the, I'm sorry. To the donors for their selfless act, and to our potential donors, I've been doing a little recruitment, Sister Samuel. I've been doing a little recruitment in the audience to our potential donors. Thank you, thank you very much. To our former minister, who not only is a donor, but also was one of the persons who assisted in getting us to this point. Thank you very much, sir. To the Health Promotion Unit, we wish to thank you for your support and assistance in putting together today's event. To the staff of the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital's laboratory, we know that they work selflessly and they work really, really hard, as the minister said, to ensure that our lab is up and running and always available to the citizens of our country. We wish to thank the media for covering today's event and know that we thank you for the future coverage that you will be giving us when we start our sensitization and awareness programs. We want to thank the National Lotteries Authority for the tent and the chairs that um, guaranteed our comfort this morning. We wish to thank the persons OSV and the uh, right stuff for the banner and decoration of the van, truck, bus, car. <laughs> okay, and getting us to this point was through the procurement um, done through the pan camp. And we, we know that it has been done before, but we just want to reiterate our thanks to PANCAMP for the donation of the mobile bank. The internal aspect of the, of the mobile has been outfitted by the government of Japan under the Grassroot for Social Humanity project. 
and we wish to extend our sincere thanks because without that donation, this would have been, as Miss Mrs. Williams said, a, 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 a white elephant for a little longer. It would have just been a shell, so we say thank you to the government. To you, our audience, you've been well. You've been very, very supportive, conducted your way. I didn't see, hear any cell phones going off. I didn't see any texting and so on. So thank you very much for being attentive and for listening so that you can get the word to spread to our nation so that when people ask, what can I do? You'll be able to say, give off the, thank you all, thank you very much.